The difference between where you are today and where you want to be in life is the action that you take. And so I have some very quick, easy financial habits for you to start applying before you turn 30. And if you apply these consistently, you will see very, very huge results in your life and it will solve a lot of financial problems for you before they even happen. So the first thing I want you to do is break down your pay and your costs. So instead of thinking, we'll just throw a number out there for easy math. So instead of just thinking that you make $100,000 just because on your offer letter for your job, it says you got $100,000, you have to look at it after tax. And so let's say now after taxes, that $100,000 is more like $86,000. What I want you to do from there is break that down on a month to month level. So we're gonna divide that $86,000 we just talked about, and I'll have this on my screen just for visibility purposes, but we're gonna turn the $86,000 into what it looks like per month. So we're gonna divide that by 12 months. That is $7,166 per month divided by two. This is gonna give us our every other week, which is when most people get paid. That's gonna be $3,583.33. And so something we need to get back to doing is just purely breaking down how much we're actually making and then basing our entire budget off of that. Now, this is a very respectable amount of money, and I think most people would be very happy with this. The problem is we don't always break down our costs in the same way, and so that gets us into some trouble because we're still thinking about that six-figure price tag, that $100,000 that we forget that the number that we've already broken down does not properly reflect the amount that we're paying in our costs, and that, my friend, is a sin. It is a financial sin. You don't need to be doing it because it can put you behind, and this is a mistake that a lot of people 30 and older are still making. And so we gotta stop the problem before it even starts. And so the way you're gonna break down your costs, so think about stuff like rent or your cell phone bill or your internet bill. Obviously it's already broken down because you already know pretty much how much per month you're gonna pay for that, but you wanna multiply that number by 12. So now you can start to see how much you're gonna be spending on that per year. So let's say your cell phone bill is $150 times 12, you're spending $1,800 per year on your cell phone. And you just have to understand that that is more than what most people pay on average for rent for one month. And for the ease of math, let's say that your rent is $1,500 per month. You multiply that by 12, that's $18,000 per year. That's 18% of your salary right there. So those are just super quick examples, but I promise you, if you just do the simple math one day, like I'll show you up here, the $86,000, right? That's the total you're making after taxes. Then you subtract it from the $1,800 a year that you pay in cell phone bills minus the $18,000 that you pay in rent, you have $66,200 left. When you look at it in this way, it starts to make you think about money differently. And I wish somebody told me about this when I was in my early 20s, but these are the mistakes that I'm teaching you. I'm 29 right now, so even I'm learning from some of these things that I'm putting on this list before I turn 30. And the last thing that I want you to break down is your savings. All of us have savings goals, and they can seem a little daunting, especially if you wanna save a big number like $10,000 and you don't know how long it's gonna take. Well, the thing is, if you break that number down, it becomes a lot less intimidating. And so I'm gonna show you something on the screen real quick, and you can screenshot it if you want. As a matter of fact, if you do screenshot it, just type in the comment screenshot, just so I can know if I need to keep making videos with these types of information in them. So you can just take a quick screenshot and just have it on your phone, and then that way, your savings goals will become that much easier to you. But just for example, if you wanna save $365, that's just $7.02 per week over the course of a year. And I know you can see the rest of this, but we'll just say a few more. And if you wanna save $1,000, that's $19.23 per week over the course of a year. So if you really think about it, do you spend $20 per week on something? I know I do. I know I could go without it too. And typically it could be something like Chipotle or Starbucks or something like that. But if you have a goal, it's as simple as breaking the numbers down, making them less intimidating. And even if you're not able to commit to these numbers every single week, perhaps you can commit to them every other week and you'll still be getting closer and closer to your goal. And it'll just take you twice as long if you spread it out by a whole week. But then the number will just be $19.23 every other week over the course of two years to hit $1,000. Does that make sense? And as you can see, the $10,000 goal, and some people want to save this in a year. Maybe they're trying to move out of their parents' house. Maybe they're trying to save up for something big, or maybe they're just setting up their emergency fund. 
But that number seems daunting. But when you look at it, it's $192.31 per week over the course of a year. So some of y'all can look at that number and be like, oh, wow, that's doable. I can do that. And that's the thing. You need to be clear on what you make, how much you're spending, and how much you're saving. And this is a very quick and easy way to do it. Moving on, track your expenses and budget regularly. I say this all the time, but I recently found something out. A lot of people don't have systems for this, so I got you. There is this app called Empower Personal Dashboard. It was formerly known as Personal Capital. I want you to download it. There is a link in the description just for you to download it through that link. Once you do, and it's 100% free, by the way, it will. all you do is you link your bank account with it. And it's going to start tracking your expenses for you. And all you have to do is look at it and track it. And I recommend if you're new to this, track it every single day. And then you can start to veer off of it then once a week, then once every other week. But you need to look at this regularly so you get into a cadence and you don't overspend in certain categories. The only thing you got to do is set a limit for how much you want to spend every month, which you can easily base off of the information I just gave you in number one. And that is going to help you out tremendously. We don't need to spend too much time on that. We're going to go to number three now. Live below your means. And, you know, I saw this quote today and I, I wish I would have took a screenshot of it. So this isn't verbatim, but this is just what I remember. It was something to the effect of stop taking life advice from people who base their lifestyle off their credit cards. And, and for me, that's the perfect summary of live below your means and you know what a lot of people's problem is young and old is you care so much about what people think that you go out here and do things that you don't need to do with money that you don't have to impress a bunch of people that you don't even really know like that like they might be impressed for a second oh that's a nice car oh that's, that's a nice shirt those are some nice shoes and then they keep on going about their day they forget all about it in the grand scheme of things, your goals are significantly more important. And that's why I made a whole video on how to live below your means. There's ways you can live below your means without missing out on life. You can still do the things you love. You can still go to the places you want to go to, but you just spend less on it. And there's information in that video on just how you can do that. I'll link it up here as well as in the description. And this point wouldn't be complete without me telling you number four, which is delay gratification. And that's as simple as be smart with your money. I know you want that iPad Pro. You know what I'm saying? But before spending $1,500 to $2,000 on it, make sure your savings is in a good place. Make sure you can buy more than one iPad without going broke. You're not going to buy more than one, but if you can't buy more than one, it's pretty accurate to say that you can barely afford it if you can't buy more than one of them. And I think that's a fair statement to make. Because the things that you don't second guess when you buy like a pack of gum, for example, you don't need to buy five or six of them, but you probably could. So even if that means you have to wait another three to six months to buy something that you really, really want, it's in your best interest and it's best for your finances to just wait a little bit. You don't have it right now, so chances are you don't need it right now. You can wait a few more months and that's way easier said than done. But when you continue to look at how much money you're already going to be spending by default in terms of your total pay after taxes, I think this will be a much easier decision to make when you look at that. So I'm going to help you out with savings in general with this tip right here. This is tip number five. You need to save consistently for your 30. And the way you save consistently is by automating your savings. And how much do you save? Well, you look at tip number one and you break down how much you want to save and see how tangible it is within whichever amount of time. And so for example, if you want to save your first $5,000 this year, I'll put it on the screen again, you're gonna to need to save $96.15 per week for a year. And why not turn that $96.15 into $100, why not? Then you're gonna make it impossible for you not to reach your goal. And then, and you do something that's 100% free. You set up automations within your bank account. You tell your bank account where to send that $96.15 every single week and when to do it. You can pick it down to the date. And once you do that, saving will become so much easier. You don't have to search up videos on YouTube, how to save money, best ways to save money, saving money tips. Like I used to go through that too before I knew about this, but if you just break the numbers down and then set it automatically so you don't have to forget about it, because let's, let's face it, we're all busy. We're busy adults. We have stuff to do. And sometimes we forget. We don't always have things written down. We don't always have systems. The best thing you can do is set up a system and it's 100% free and your bank sends money to your savings account. And then you just call it a day. You don't even have to think about it. And before you know it, you will reach that goal. 
I mean, how could you not reach your goal if you did that? So it doesn't get any more simple than that. All you have to do is turn that automation on and just watch your money grow. That's all you have to do. And all you have to do is put that into action. Number six, this one is a little trickier and this one does tend to take a few more years than all the other ones. The other ones are basically things you can apply like right now. But number six is something that if it takes you a few years, don't feel bad about it. But um, I want you to maximize at least one of your retirement contributions. And here's why, and here's exactly what I'm talking about. So if I'm talking to a bunch of full-time employees, like I'm pretty sure I am, typically you'll have a 401k and or a Roth IRA. If you have a 401k, I do not expect you to fully maximize your contribution there because that's going to be a lot of your money going into it. Like, as of 2024, you can contribute up to $23,000 of your own money per year. I'm not expecting that. So I would expect that if you wanted to max out one of your retirement contributions, I would just think that you would go for the lowest hanging fruit. In this case, it would be the Roth IRA and you can contribute up to $7,000 per year to that. So this is gonna be my first year of maxing mine out and I'm 29. So this is a prime example of don't feel bad if it takes you a few years. I, this was something I never really took seriously, never really tried to go all in on. And now that I'm really focusing on it, I don't know that I would have been able to do this a few years ago because I wasn't earning as much as I am right now. This is going to really pay off when you retire because the younger you can max this out, like really make this your life's mission to max out as young as you possibly can without sacrificing your savings or putting a financial part of your life in jeopardy don't do that but make it your life's mission otherwise to use your extra money and deploy that towards your roth ira it will more than pay off during retirement and i have full videos that show you how to know what to invest in on your roth ira i show you what i invest in within my roth ira there's a ton of information on this channel if you don't know where to get started but i would seriously seriously aim to do that and with that said, number seven, I want you to invest consistently for at least five years. Again, this is not something that everybody's gonna 100% be able to do right out of the gate, right when they're like 20 years old. Most of you will already have a 401k by then, and that will already be growing, but I'm talking about other accounts that grow alongside your 401k, like your Roth IRA, or like your individual investing account. If you can invest every single month for five years, on a consistent basis, you will see big results in a very short amount of time, especially if you choose the proven investing strategy when it comes to the stock market that I teach on this channel and in my investing course. I'll link some videos up here and in the description for you to check out after this. If you're interested in learning how to further grow your money, I can show you how to build it up to six figures and then going beyond that. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that information out. But I'm just going to start posting more investment content because I'm really into that type of thing. And I want to help the people that do watch it grow their net worth. And eventually, I think the audience from there will grow. And honestly, from there, I think I will get even more fulfillment from doing this. Number eight, check your net worth monthly. I really wish I did this starting from, we'll say the age of 21 or 22 years old. Man, I really wish I knew. Like I had to really kind of go back in time for one of my wealth journey videos when I actually broke down how I went from zero dollars all the way to over 130,000 plus. Now I'm even further along than that, but at the time, I had to really go back into my account statements and look at what the numbers were looking like back then. It's really crazy because I was able to find all that information, but if I was able to track this from a younger age, I think I would be a lot further along because I am competitive, especially when it comes to stuff like numbers. So if I'm competing with myself on a month to month basis and Throughout this whole time, I've been blessed to have disposable income through making extra money, whether it's in the form of overtime or building many businesses on the side. I've been able to have a little more disposable income to put towards investments and towards savings. So if I had been looking at that on a more intentional level, I think I'd be a lot more further along. But definitely check your net worth every single month. I do have a free net worth tracker that you can download in the description. It is a fine product and it has up to 10 years full of net worth trackers, which means for the next 10 years, you'll be able to track your net worth just fine. 
And if you need another one, just go back on, onto my website, download another one if you need one in another 10 years. And if you're intrigued by my net worth and how I've built it, I show you the whole journey on my wealth journey series. So definitely make sure you check that out if you haven't already. Number nine, this is extremely important, especially before you turn 30, because I feel that when you are young, that is when you need to really be aggressive about your career because you can see the most growth in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of responsibility in the background, such as kids and, and things like that. And so tip number nine is look to see if your salary is moving up or not. Because the thing is, when it comes to your net worth, when it comes to your ability to save, invest and pay off debt or pay down debt, that is directly proportional to the amount of money that you are making. And so if the money that you're making stays the same, inflation's still going up, which means costs are going to rise. So either way, if your money isn't going up, technically it's going down in terms of your buying power. And that is a big problem. And so if you can resolve that issue while you're still in your 20s and you just keep moving up and moving up and just getting better at what you do and taking on more responsibilities and more opportunities and more overtime and really grinding out certain phases of your 20s, it's not fun at all. I know a lot of young people prioritize fun, but the thing is, you don't you, you can either choose to be ahead of the game in your 20s and super ahead of the game in your 30s or you can spend your entire 20s having fun goofing around lollygagging and then being behind in your 30s and not being able to catch up till you're in your 40s because these things that i'm talking about can take an entire decade to really fulfill and bring into fruition now, i'm not saying you could never have fun but i'm just saying that shouldn't be your number one priority people tell you all the time it's your 20s you should be having fun look I am so against that. I think there's a time and place for fun. But right now you need to get your ducks in a row because last time I checked, you have dreams in the future and a ton of potential. And I am not gonna sit here and tell you to waste your potential. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you not to apply yourself. I'm gonna tell you to do the things, do the work, take the action, because that is the difference between where you are right now and where you're gonna be. So make sure your salary is going up because if it's not, it's time to look into something else. And, you know, when I was younger, I was going to conferences. I was going to seminars. I was going into people who were smarter than me's houses. I was going into meetings. I was asking questions. I was asking for feedback. I was hungry. I wanted to just get better at what I was doing. And then having that mindset is what increased my earning potential from like $60,000 to literally more than double that in just the span of like three years. It didn't take long in the grand scheme of things because I was I've been making six figures since I was 25. So in the grand scheme of things, it did not take that long. What I'm telling you is make sure your money's moving on up like George Jefferson. All right, make sure you're looking at your salary progression one to two times a year. Now we're gonna look at arguably the most important thing that a lot of people sleep on and forget about. Regularly review your financial goals. That is tip number 10. If you review your financial goals once, we'll say every month, or even every three months, you will see growth because for one, you will see what you're already accomplishing without even realizing it. You'll see, okay, well, I've reached this goal, so I need to change this. Or you might have a completely different mindset shift or a completely different mindset altogether and say, well, you know what? I don't want those things that I thought I wanted. I want to put this money towards something else. And so now this is my new goal. Another thing you'll want to do is tr actually track to see how you're doing are you ahead or behind and in terms of how much time you gave yourself to do something how are you looking how are you stacking up against your own wants and desires and expectations because it's one thing to want things and feel like you deserve things but it's another thing to take the action that produces those results that you want and as you start to mark things off of your list of things that you're already accomplishing and you're already doing great things on, that's going to build confidence and you're going to know for sure that you can do certain things. You won't uh, second guess yourself so much. You won't question yourself so much. You'll just be like, up oh, another one knocked off the list. We're good to go. And you're just building and building and building. And then you can start putting in and then you can start putting in more ambitious goals and really going for it and really feeling good about it. And I think that's a very good thing to do. The way I did this was I made a one to five year plan and I literally drew pictures and 
wrote out long notes of exactly what I wanted life to look like and blah, blah, blah. My brother saw it and, and thought that I had lost my mind, but it was about effective and I got exactly what I wanted out of life in that short amount of time, even sooner than I planned to. And so I would just say, do something like that. Put out a five-year plan, a two to five-year plan or however you want to do it and really look at it every now and then. It doesn't have to be every day, but look at it. And those things are going to be in the back of your mind. And when you go to sleep, you'll be thinking about it. When you wake up, you'll be thinking about it. It'll become a part of your behavior in a very in a very subtle way. And you'll just move different and you won't make as many, nearly as many bad financial decisions. These are the things I need you to start doing before you turn 30. I'm not perfect at every single one of these things. The, the main one I need to work on right now is tracking my expenses, which is why I recommend the Empower app that I was telling you about because I don't have the time to be typing in my expenses anymore. If I'm relying on myself to do that, I'm gonna do it after the month is already over and by then it's too late, the damage is already done. If I have an app showing me what I spent in real time, I don't have to worry about it and I can look at it on a daily basis, weekly basis, however much I need to. And I know my money is going to be right, but I'm 29. So I still have a good, you know, 10 months and about, you know, 30 days to recover from whatever financial mistakes I've made. I say that partially as a joke, but you know, if you watch my wealth journey series, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.